someone also called it quite theatrical because he actually he looked down a lot and he didn't look at the audience. Mm -hmm. So it, it, there could be one audience for 500, you know, there wasn't any of the I wrote the bike and I <coughs> held the cigar. I rode the bike, I held a cigar, and I filled it with toothpaste. I drove the bike, I held a cigar, I filled it with toothpaste to demonstrate how dynamic or how fixed and the rain a cigar-shaped cloud of sodium atoms in a Bose Einstein condensate with an entropy of zero like supercubes in a box. I just used a cigar and toothpaste to demonstrate how Dana Vestergaard, how in February 1999, 
managed to slow down life to the speed of a bike in a number of sodium atoms that she had arranged in a Bose Einstein contemplate with an entropy of zero and a temperature just over absolute zero. The cold and passive atom <coughs> contains the light for nanoseconds before letting it go deep. They change its way into matter and act it as a digital recording device. started two minutes and eight seconds ago when I rode a bike and then used a cigar and toothpaste to demonstrate how Lene Vestergaard Howe in 1999 managed to slow down light to the speed of a bike in a number of sodium atoms that she had arranged in a cigar-shaped Bose Einstein contemplate. This special day I demonstrated with a box of sugar cubes after having measured my own body temperature. <coughs> Two years later, she managed to completely stop light inside an atom cloud. After a few nanoseconds of darkness, the light beam was released again from it. So, in other words, the frozen atom cloud recorded the light like a digital recorder by changing a wave into matter and then back again. And this made me think, if it's really necessary to use atom clouds to record light and play it back. Or in other words, does the light in a movie stem from the lamp or from the screen?
lecture started four minutes and 15 seconds ago when I rode a bike to demonstrate the speed of life on the 18th of February 1999 when Lene Bestergaard Pau slowed down a beam of light to the speed of a bicycle. Then I held a cigar and filled it with toothpaste to demonstrate how light was dropped inside a cigar-shaped cloud of sodium atoms held in place by powerful electromagnets. The atoms were packed tightly like super cubes into a Bose Einstein condensate, which is a state where all atoms have the entropy of zero because they are dead cold. Then I recorded a common lamp to show how light was recorded in the Investigal House setup. Her setup may be more complex, but the question regarding observation and documentation in and of real time and space are problems that can be directly translated to the performative art. Before trying to get all the supercube back into the book, I described the development of this lecture with the Helmholtz function, which marks the upper limit of a work that can be undertaken by converting the original content of this lecture into entropy in a process where the temperature of the artist's body remains unchanged which in this case is a marker of the artist's good health. Entropy is the process towards greater complexity that can never be reversed. And at a certain point, the system is filled with itself to its limits and what it does. After this point, any new information that is being added will lead to other confusion among the audience. Yeah. 
Simultaneously, the new information that is gradually added will distort the original content of the lecture, which was about the Investigator House, as you probably remember. In this way, I will succeed in creating a content plate of documentation which after a few years will slow down the development of my lecture towards zero. Until the audience must wait forever for the next slide action. And after explaining all this, I demonstrated the same relation in a simple and charming way with a Danish nursery song called The Mountain in the Forest. And this is actually a little weird since Denmark doesn't have mountains and hardly any forests. However, in this song, each new sentence adds a little new information to the whole story that then must be sung all over and again before the next little part can be added. The described structure can be interpreted as a criticism of the age of information, where the amount of irrelevant documenta document documentation and information just goes and goes. Or you might interpret it as a response to the challenge of documenting performance art, which differs from theatre in that it only happens once, like reality. And after explaining all this, I recorded the mentioned form, and then I showed another video, and uh, then I started explaining how this lecture started with me sitting on a bike, and after that, as the 10th live action, I started handing papers out. <laughs>